Jessica, could I just say that this morning I opened my news feed from Australia and there is a, a message from climate scientists say that the Great Barrier Reef, arguably our most beautiful natural asset, is in the terminal stage of decline. So now irretrievably damaged, which has happened so much faster than I thought it would. I thought we had a few decades left to act in order to save it. It's, that was wrong. So uh, when I see things like that, I just appeal to everybody to say this is a world asset. Don't let other great treasures follow as our climate changes too quickly. Uh, we shouldn't be scared of, of change, technological change, change to new energy sources. We can do all of that. But what we should be scared of is the destruction of the world that supports and nourishes us. So I'm writing an ecological history of Europe and it turns out that Romania is absolutely central to the ecological history of Europe. In fact, this country was where the science of paleobiology was created in the 1920s through a very eccentric paleontologist called um, uh, Count Nopka, okay. Nopska, I yes. think it is, who lived at Hacek in the, in the mountains and discovered dinosaur fossils there. And his studies totally revolutionized our understanding of paleontology. They were ignored for many years because he wasn't from Germany or England or the US. That happens. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now he is seen as this great visionary. So I'm interested in going to his, his area and seeing uh, where he lived, what he worked on and what he did. Um, you are so lucky in Romania to have this incredibly beautiful country and still so rich in natural uh, biodiversity. Bears, wolves, lynx, you, you have everything here. It's fantastic. But never take it for granted. This could be destroyed very easily by a changing climate and by careless development patterns. Well, we have lost in the last couple of decades 65% of biodiversity. So, so many species, uh, uh, not yet extinct, but right on the brink. You know, populations are plummeting everywhere. Um, there's a lot of big polluting cars here in the streets of Bucharest that I see. Um, maybe a pollution charge like they have in London would be a really good thing to have in Bucharest. We are the fifth most trafficked city in the world. Wow, well, I, all I can say is that there are ways of dealing with this. Other countries have done it, you know. You bring in a pollution charge. You make bicycle, a uh, bicycle is easier to use, bicycle lanes and so forth. You make sure that you have a really efficient uh, metro system and a really efficient public transport system. But these are problems we can overcome that create jobs and create opportunity, give us better air quality and even local industries. I mean, I don't know where you get your bicycles from here, but you could be manufacturing them here. You already have a great car brand in Dacia. Mm -hmm. You know, why not concentrate on making it really efficient as well? Well, a lot of action is local, you know, so it's the cities that often do really great things. So the pollution charge was brought in by the mayor of London, you know. So if I was the mayor of Bucharest, I think the first thing I would do is to say, I'm going to go out and employ um, some Swiss parking inspectors <laughs> because they're incredibly efficient here. Yeah? And I understand it's already illegal to park on the pavement. So the Swiss parking inspectors will either die of a heart attack or will be reaping millions very quickly, you know. So you could start with something like that, yeah. yeah, yeah and, sure. and make some bicycle lanes in the city, you know, why not? Once you get the cars off the pavements, you have the space for bicycle lanes. Yeah. I mean, in my own country of Australia, we have a heavy dependence on coal as a primary energy source. But 100% of new energy infrastructure in Australia is all renewable. It's all wind and solar. So the same thing could be true here in Romania. You know, this is a country of brilliant young engineers and entrepreneurs. It really is. I was at a school three days ago in Romania and I met some of them, these year 12 kids who want to get out and make a difference. Why not give them the chance to prosper in the new global clean economy. And if Romania, if older Romanians can facilitate that, you will have done a great thing. You know, that sort of thinking about destroying the environment to create wealth is really part of the Stone Age culture. You know, it's not, that's not the modern world. You look at the big companies in the world today that are making money, huh? They're not polluting industries like that, yeah? They're Google, Amazon, all these big, big companies that have found a new way of doing things. And the tr same is true for the energy sector. The solutions after the Paris Agreement are fall into two big streams now. The first is to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels as quickly as we can. And one of the universal things we can all do is just be more efficient.
you know, with seeing the Great Barrier Reef die like that, you know, I should explain to you, I'm 61 years old. I dived on the Great Barrier Reef for the first time when I was 17. I loved it. It was pristine back then. When I was 20, we saw the first bleaching event that damaged the reef, first ever in recorded history. Mm -hmm. um, and then every decade we had another one and things got worse slowly until last year we had a massive bleaching event that destroyed over 20% of the reef. And this year we have a bleaching event twice as big. So it's, it's, um, it is the death knell for the reef. So imagine knowing you were the last person ever to see a living elephant and you have to tell your children that they will never see this. That's what I feel like today with this barrier reef, you know. Um, I still remain optimistic. I know we will leave a badly damaged world behind, but I'm optimistic that our civilization, civilization can survive and many of our environments can survive if we make the shift rapidly. This, this is the area that excites me the most because we have these clean energy technologies now that are so efficient. We can see they'll drive fossil fuels out of the market. Electric vehicles, wind, solar, concentrator solar and so forth. Yeah. But there is already too much pollution in the air to, mm -hmm. to allow us to have a sustainable future. Mm -hmm. So my focus has been on new industries that pull CO2 out of the air. And they range from um, carbon negative concretes. Mm -hmm. You know, these are concretes that you can build a building out of and that building will absorb CO2 out of the air, you know. Um, new ways of manufacturing plastics and fertilizers and fuels mm -hmm. using CO2 from the atmosphere, captured from the atmosphere. These actually exist at small scale, you know. Mm -hmm. We can now make carbon fiber from atmospheric CO2. It's a fantastic yeah, possibility, wow. yeah? Sounds Amazing. Sounds and you think about seaweed farming in the world's oceans. You know, seaweed grows 30 to 60 times faster than land-based plants. Um, it, it buffers the ocean acidity, so it's a great place to grow fish and shellfish. Uh, so if we could have seaweed farms in the world's oceans, we can feed the world, capture CO2, and sequester it into the ocean depths. Mm -hmm. These are great opportunities for the future, you know. So we need to start thinking about this great burden of CO2 up there as a business opportunity. How are we going to turn the problem into a solution? And there's so many ways of doing this. And I am sure that among your audience listening today, there'll be young Romanian engineers or entrepreneurs or others who are thinking about their future and thinking about where to go. You know, if they're thinking about going into the fossil fuel industry, I'd say, guys, to take a step back for a moment, think about making plastics, making fuels, not from polluting oil, but from atmospheric CO2. This is really there already. It's possible already. It's up to you as engineers and entrepreneurs to make efficient processes and to sell this stuff. And then we'll have a real scalable solution. Intră pe burlog.com, abonează-te pe YouTube și urmărește-ne pe Facebook și Instagram. Dacă vrei să ne susții, donează prin PayPal sau Patreon. Mulțumim!